Hello everyone, welcome to video number 8 of the Intro to ArcGIS Online video series. At this point of the series, we have imported and generated data, did all the data preparation, which has led to some visual analysis that is really starting to shape up our answer to the question. Is there enough community housing in Toronto and is it properly situated? Now, in this video, we are going to answer that very question using some analysis tool that can help quantify the answer to that question. So let's open up our map document. From the styling that we've done, the conclusion we can make is that there is not enough community housing in Toronto. Looking at one neighborhood here, this here is the Thorncliff Park. This seems to be devoid of community housing. They're all located in the other neighborhood, which is the Flemington Park. So yeah, I don't think that there are enough community housing in Toronto from visually looking at this map. And this might just be the visual you accompany your research or story and deliver it to your audience. But we can take it one step further by doing more analysis on the data layers we have. So to do some analysis, let's go to my Map Viewer Classic here. Now I already have that open up, so I'm just gonna be in this window here, go to my Analysis tab. And the first tool we'll use is called Summarize Within. And that is in Summarize Data. Click on Summarize Within. And it'll take you through the steps here where you are summarizing how many community housing are in a neighborhood where I put the polygon of Toronto affordability layer, which is my neighborhood layer, put the layer to summarize as community housing. And the third step is the key one where I indicate the total unit to be calculated by the sum. So each neighborhood will calculate the number of buildings as well as the total units. So I don't have to do that manually. I let this tool run it. So we can also group, we can group our fields as well. So let's say I want to group it by building type. That's also an option. I don't think that's necessary. Give it a layer name, save it in the folder, make sure your current map extent is not selected and then run the analysis. Now, because this is the magic of demo, I already ran this analysis and that would be so I am back in my map viewer here. That layer would be this one here. So let me turn off community and even the affordability layer. And notice I have these missing pockets. So what I did is I filter this data set where uh, the summarize within layer that has all that data set that the tool produced. And I filtered it to make sure that there are no counts so where there are neighborhoods with zero community housing overlaying on top i made sure it doesn't show up on the map so count of points is not zero so why did i do that well this is actually an issue that happened in video four i believe but in video four if you recall we used the overlay tool between the real estate boundaries and the neighborhood boundaries that were not agreeing with each other we had to filter it out to the toronto area and then we had to kind of cut the real estate boundary to match the neighborhood boundaries well when two boundaries of different data source come together there happens to be this issue called slivers so there are really minor minor boundary lines that did not match up and when they didn't match up it created a new a new polygon so that new polygon would appear as a new data record but because we're not looking at the total number of neighborhoods we're looking at what the neighborhood is we don't see that and also these slivers are tend to be like really minimal sizes so because they were so minimal filtering out things like count to zero as well as symbolizing our data layer style to have just a color to represent that demographic, we don't get to see that issue. And it doesn't affect our overall answer to the question. So going back to explaining this layer, the circles here represent the unit. So the amount of total units 
offered by the Toronto Community Housing in that neighborhood. So if I were to look at this neighborhood here and notice my pop-ups for this layer hasn't been done, but in this neighborhood Walburn, there is a total amount of 26 buildings, but 1,985 units. So that's telling you the capacity of these community housing are taking. And this would be great to compare with to the populations. Maybe I have a layer of population to see if these community housing, there are many ways to visualize your data set, but with this analysis tool, we get a affirmative or quantified number from our data analysis. So the next analysis tool we'll look at is calculate density. So going back into a map for your here, the map for your classic, I'm going to click back and jump back to my perform analysis panel and then go into analyze patterns, select calculate density. And what we're doing simply is just looking at the density of these community housing select the community housing as our layer to calculate density. It only takes point data, so it knew that there was only one. Use a count field option. We could calculate the density by the total residential units or another thing. So let's total residential units. And now a couple of things in options here. We can actually make sure that this calculate density tool is within Toronto. So what happens is it just takes in the entire point data map we have of community housing and creates a rectangular that encompasses all that layer and create this density looking map. So look at this. If we were to take this study area, it'll take this square of the map. But if you turn clip to output to a particular boundary, which would be our affordability layer, that would clip to the entire Toronto. It just looks better. The analysis is the same. So let's run analysis. And yet again, I have done the analysis. This is the outcome. So let me just close this off here. I'm going to turn off the boundaries underneath it. It's a bit hard to see, so actually let's change the style option to maybe a different color ramp. So there's different color ramps I can pick from. I'm going to look for best for dark colors, so let's do that. It's not a ramp I want, actually. Let's try this. Ooh, look at that result. I'm going to do this and do a reverse. So aside from just changing the color by ramps, I can actually select individual colors and change it. So I'm going to actually change the yellows to have no yellow. So now we have a very clear view of the density of these units of community housing buildings. So let's hit done. And what I can do to, to so I can say that I ran the analysis. This is the concentration of community housing. And this is actually, if we double check with the community housing data, makes total sense because, yeah, there are a lot of buildings here, but the units are insignificant compared to the ones in the downtown core. So that's just another way to quantify the whether something is in the right place. And we can also bring in the neighborhood layer and then see if this makes sense. Let's turn this off and does it make sense that there are such a high density in the downtown core when we have areas like Thorncliffe Park as well as oops, as well as this Oakwood Village with a low income, high property price, but no community housing? So that's something you can visualize and show your readers. So let's go on and check out our next analysis tool. So I'm going back to my map viewer classic here, go into the analysis panel, click on analyze patterns and select find hotspot. Now this tool helps us determine whether there are statistically significant clusters in the spatial pattern of your data. So that would be our community housing. So let's select that as a step one. 
And we want to find the clusters of highs and lows for our total residential units. We don't need to divide it by anything. There are no buffer that we are doing the hotspot analysis, so leave it as it is. Same thing, give it a name, uncheck, run analysis, and what do we get? Well, let's go to our map viewer. In our map viewer here, I did generate that layer. What we get is a bunch of dots. <laughs> so these dots, what do they mean? Well, actually, if you, let me just turn this off so we can see better. There are dots that are have a red spot on it, they're blue, some with no color. To understand what these mean, we can select it and go into properties here and click on the items page, which would be information, more detail. So in the item page of this hotspot layer, it will tell you that the output is represented by the following, where red dots mean hotspots with high total residential units, blue would mean there are low clusters of total residential unit. So that means where it is red, there are high volume of community housing units. Where it's blue, there are low, so these are most likely low rises. And where they are in between, just it tells you here 90% confidence and lighter shade of the blue and red. It just means that they're not confident. So that's not where the cluster spot is. So this kind of helps simplify the data set. And remember, you can change the color and then you can outline the data set or outline the map where the affordable housing layers are clustering of units, where the concentration of units are and where there are not. So this could be a problem. There are not a high cluster of units, but does this consider a low income high property value neighborhood. So that's another option you have with analysis tools to visualize your data or to conclude an answer. The next tool I wanna to talk about is the drive time tool. So let's go back into our Map Viewer Classic. We are going to go into the analysis panel, click on use proximity and select create drive time area. So I personally think this is my favorite analysis tool. It takes your input and creates a buffer based on your building or your point layer and determine the drive time distance or walking distance of the area it covers. But essentially this can answer the question, is the community housing in Toronto properly situated? Because maybe, who knows, some of these buildings are very close proximity to a bus station or stop or even a highway hub or ramp. So, to understand whether it is close to transportation, we obviously need to bring in transportation layer, bus stop layers, highways, or just use the underlying highway base map. But we have to start off with the drive time area analysis tool. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Choose the Toronto community housing point layer. As for measures, there are tons of different options, either by time or distance. And you can do it by interval. So it says here you can do it by intervals, separate it by spaces. So I can do five minute, 10 minute, 20 minute driving time. I can use traffic data. So there is a associated database that basically runs with this tool when this is checked on. And we can select barrier layers. Like are there a particular feature in the world that is blocking this drive time? Maybe there is a water body that can block it so that's going to be accounted for when you choose that barrier travel direction you can do it towards the building or away from the building areas from different points so let's say this drive time here for this building and this drive time for that building overlaps so the area that is like a 10 minute drive they overlap you can have the option to separate them or dissolve them or even split that overlap. Once again, add a layer name, put it in a folder you'd like and check off use current map extent and run your analysis. So I didn't do an example for this one, but I just wanna give you a brief highlight on some of the common use analysis tool, as well as tools that can be 
use to help answer our questions. So pick one of these analyses that I just went over during this video, or you can go rogue and explore the other analysis tools that are available in ArcGIS Online. Once you're done the analysis, remember to go back to the map viewer, the map viewer here, and do the cosmetic customization of the map and then share that map with me. I would love to see which analysis tool you choose. For our next video, we are actually going to learn how to share these maps because I think we're ready to share our results. So until next video, happy mapping.